Welcome back. If you have not done Module 3, Lesson 1, and its task of drafting your Statement of Philosophy of Teaching, please stop and do those first before continuing. Writing an Effective Philosophy of Teaching Statement, POT, or POT as we like to call it, involves deep reflection on your beliefs and practices as a teacher, as well as a lot of work to draft and polish a statement that is both complete and concise. Before you send it to your employer or upload it onto your ePortfolio, we suggest checking it against the following set of common pitfalls, which we like to refer to as potholes. Our first pothole is, it's too long or too short. Employers are likely to get several applications and will have a limited amount of time for reviewing each application. If they see a philosophy statement that is too long, they might just quickly skim the introduction and conclusion or decide not to read it at all. At the same time, a statement that is too short is likely to fail to clearly show the employer what you believe and how you implement those beliefs in the classroom. A too short statement can sound like mere lip service without any depth. Unfortunately, most job announcements do not mention minimum or maximum lengths for philosophy statements. So how long should a philosophy statement be? We recommend somewhere around 500 to 1,000 words. If you're having trouble with the length, we recommend getting feedback and support from a colleague. If your POT is too short, they might be able to ask a few questions that can help you to expand your ideas or provide clearer examples. If your POT is too long, they can help you to figure out which parts could be trimmed or perhaps even cut altogether. The second pothole is the organization pattern is not clear. There's no specific template for how a philosophy statement should be organized, which is wonderful because it gives you freedom to write it in a way that reflects your own style and your strengths. However, if the employer cannot quickly and easily identify your key beliefs or values, you run the risk of having them give up and stop reading. And they may wonder if your lesson plans are also organized in a way that students won't be able to understand the course material. One common organizational problem that we see in POT statements is long meandering paragraphs. In general, the longer a paragraph is, the more difficult it will be for a reader to follow the author's ideas. This is typically exacerbated when people are reading on a computer, tablet, or smartphone. You may want to consider breaking a really long paragraph into shorter paragraphs. Additionally, some teachers like to use subheadings to identify each main belief, and we've heard from employers that subheaders make it much easier for them to navigate an applicant's POT statement. We suggest showing your philosophy statement to a few different people and asking them to list your key beliefs and how you implement them. If they cannot easily do that, you may need to improve the organization of your statement. The third pothole is it's about teaching in general. Another common pothole is to write about teaching in general rather than teaching in your specific field. For example, many philosophy statements we have seen mention the importance of student motivation or creating good rapport. While these are indeed valuable aspects of your teaching, they apply to teaching anything but they do not give an employer a clear sense that you really know how to teach a second language or how to teach literature or creative writing or whatever your area of expertise may be. So for example, if you want to include motivation in your philosophy statement, write about how to teach your specific content area in a way that motivates your specific learners. A good cross-check is to ask yourself if each section of your philosophy statement provides the reader a clear understanding of you as a teacher in your area of expertise. The fourth pothole is it talks about ideals without examples. 
TIP surveyed language program administrators, and one of the questions was about effective philosophy statements. One respondent wrote, It's easy for applicants to name drop a few current theories or approaches, but just stating that they believe in them doesn't show me that they know how to put that belief into practice. Don't just tell me you believe in X. Show me how you implement it in a classroom so that I can visualize you as a teacher. Of course, it's not always easy to concisely explain how you operationalize a belief. Examples are essential. These can be examples of how you design an activity to incorporate one of your beliefs or strategies you use for engaging students, providing feedback, etc. The fifth pothole is it uses abstract examples rather than specific ones. The examples that illustrate how you implement each of your beliefs should be specific. If they are specific, the employer can easily visualize how you teach. In contrast, if the examples are abstract, the employer will not be able to form a picture of you in a classroom. For example, note the difference between one of the ways I develop rapport is to show my students I care about them versus one of the ways I develop rapport is to find out what name each student likes to be called. A good strategy for overcoming this pothole is to show your statement to a colleague and ask them whether or not they can indeed easily picture you in a classroom doing whatever the example is describing. The sixth pothole is it has too many references or no references at all. Your philosophy statement should clearly describe your beliefs in a way that shows you are well informed about language teaching and also shows how you implement those beliefs. We recommend taking a scholarly approach to writing a solid philosophy statement, but keep in mind that if you have too many references, it looks more like a literature review than a personal statement and is also likely to be way too long. It's also quite possible that some members of the selection committee may not be very familiar with your field, and thus a statement written only to experts may not resonate with them. On the other hand, if you include no references at all, you risk giving the impression that you are not well informed, or that you are drawing on the ideas of others without acknowledging your sources. A good rule of thumb is that if your beliefs have been strongly influenced by someone's work in the field, it's probably a good idea to cite them in your statement and include them in a list of references at the end of your statement. A few well-chosen references go a long way to help establish your credibility. The seventh pothole is it doesn't convey enthusiasm for teaching. In an effort to sound highly professional, some teachers make a point of writing their POT statements in an objective scholarly voice. However, this can backfire as you may appear to an employer as detached from your actual teaching. Think about what it is about teaching that you are truly passionate about and what happens in a classroom that energizes you and gives you satisfaction as a teacher. Then make sure that passion and energy shines through in your POT statement. There may be some people who, no matter how hard they try, really have trouble recognizing and conveying a passion for teaching languages. For those people, it may be worthwhile to think deeply about whether teaching is really the right profession for them they may find that they would be better suited to or, and much more comfortable working in another field that also deals with languages. The last pothole is it's not proofread carefully. As with all other items in your portfolio, proofreading is important. It's often said that it's not what you say, but what you do that makes the strongest impression on employers. And no matter how great a teacher you may be, a philosophy statement with proofreading errors will probably give the selection committee pause and may affect whether they interview you or not. For many of us, it can be especially difficult to proofread our own work. We start out well, 
but before long we get caught up in the content of our statement and lose our proofreading focus. To avoid having this happen, some people like to read their statements aloud. When they come across an error, it slows them down and they tend to notice it more easily. In addition, we recommend that you ask a capable colleague or friend to proofread your statement as well. Choose your proofreaders carefully though, and review their corrections carefully to make sure they are correct and they do not change your intended meaning. In conclusion, as you develop your philosophy statement, please use this information to prevent yourself from falling into any of these potholes. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources for even more strategies and tips. Do the follow-up task in the Discuss section. Write about which of the potholes you feel are the most difficult to avoid and what makes them so difficult. Then read what others have written and respond with any suggestions you may have. Thanks for listening.